to church this morning. Uh, we're just going to take our last wrap on the issue of maturity. And then um, I trust the Lord that He's going to bless you. Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. Uh, <laughs> now that scripture is getting interesting every time. The story of the two prodigal sons. Amen. <laughs> Luke chapter 15. I just want to show you, you know, when we speak about maturity, um, it's easy for you to just talk about, oh, becoming like God in power, you know. Uh, but essentially, it's, it's encompassing. It's becoming like God in the totality of who God is. It's easy for you to talk about the charismatic side of God and not talk about the characteristic side of God. And how, what do I mean by that? Do you understand that the Bible did not say God is power? It said all power belongs to God, but says God is love. So if there is a way to measure maturity of a child, you will not just look at the fact that he carries the power of God and he speaks in tongue and he's charismatic, but you must also look at the nature, the fundamental nature of God, which is love. And I don't know if you've seen that in the story of the prodigal son, his elder brother, and the father. I want to point your attention to that this morning. Luke chapter 15, the Bible says, um, Now his elder son was in the field, from verse 25, and as he came and drew near to the house, he had music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father had killed the fatted calf, and had, because he had received him safe and sound. Verse 28, the Bible says, And he was angry, and he would not go in. Therefore came his father out, and they had to beg this guy to come in. Now, my question this morning is, How did that loving father give birth to this mean son? Does it make sense to you? How did that kind... Did you see the love of that father? He was reckless. We've spoken about it. He was reckless love. He was waiting at the window. He was anticipating the return of his son. You know there are sons like that. That you didn't want them to go away from home. But they were just stubborn. Despite the fact that you loved them. They were just stubborn. But even despite the fact that that guy was stubborn. The father was praying for him. That's the way the love... Operate the love of the father. He was praying for him. He was the Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ, he didn't wait for us to say, Jesus, if you die for me, I will believe you. Mm-mm. When we were rebellious, he died. So you see, love is front-loaded. Love is not given because somebody deserves it. Do you understand that the whole world was provided with salvation? It's only those who receive it that become saved. But the salvation was not procured for the church. It was procured for the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So this father had his heart filled with love. He was waiting for that prodigal son to come back. While he was a distant away, the Bible says the father ran to go and embrace him. While the guy was still explaining himself, I've sinned against you. I'm not worthy to be your child. Just make me your servant. He says, stop it. Come off it. From the very day you left, we made provision for your coming back. Are you getting what I'm talking about this morning? It was a reckless love. But I'm not talking about the love of the father. I'm talking about the elder son. Who You see, the, the father said, thou art always with me. But do you know the fact that a lot of believers are always with the father does not mean that they become like the father. I've spoken to you about the fact that, number one, he didn't know what he had. But number two, he didn't have the nature of the father. So from inference, you can say that this guy was happy that his brother was lost. Have you seen believers who are happy at the tragedy of others? Have you seen believers who are, for as long as they are secured in their own place, so now there was nobody contesting with him for the inheritance of the father. For as long as his brother was, he, he can be dead. You, say, you know how we say it, if he can die, let him die. How come a loving father had this kind of a mean child? It meant nothing to him that his brother was lost. If he was a good elder brother, he should have been the one putting out a search party looking out for his younger brother. 
How many times have people gone missing in the body of Christ? And the body of Christ is like, ah, we are better off without him. Ah, that guy was such a troublemaker. He will be behaving as if he's the only one that can sing here. That guy was a troublemaker. He will make him look like this is just his father's business. As if we also are not children. They rejoice at the fact that another soldier is falling. How come that a loving father gave birth and this guy never took the nature of that father? The Bible says God is love. He says, be ye therefore imitators of God. Imitators of God. So your imitation of God is not that you speak in tongues. It's that you love like God. Your imitation of God is not your charisma. It's your character. When we want to prove that you are growing in grace, you know the Bible says grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. How we prove it is not that you know Greek and Hebrew. Oh, anybody can go online and study. If you put a word in, in, in Google, it's going to give you the Hebrew origin and everything, the etymology. Every, any, any stupid person can know it. You have very many part-time theologians on Instagram and Facebook. But how do we know a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another? This is how people we know that you are my disciples. It's not that you make noise. It's not that you can, I mean, command things to happen. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Paul was writing to the Corinthian church because he was such a gifted church. He said, now there abides faith, hope, and charity. But the greatest of them is charity. Is somebody getting what I'm speaking to you about this morning? So, the good news was that this guy was lost. But you see, the elder brother couldn't care less. If he was dead, to God be the glory. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. He's so selfish and self-conceited. All that he cared about was the fact that you killed the fatted calf. How, how come you're, you're playing music? So you see people who even get angry because you have a testimony. The outcome, that testimony is not mine, it's yours. You are the one that got the job. You got the husband. You got the promotion. You were alone. Are you getting what I'm talking about this morning? He was angry that there was music. Bible says he called a servant aside. Say, you come, you come. What minutes that blast of music? What's this bedou all about? As in, it's not my bedou, it's somebody else's bedou in this kingdom. There are believers who are still like that. If he's going to blast, it must be about them. If he blasts about any other person, there will be fire on the mountain. And you see, you, have, you and I have to come to a point in our Christian life where we find, we come to assess ourselves and evaluate ourselves by the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Have you seen that grammatical blunder in the Bible? He was a deliberate one. The fruit of the Spirit. You would have expected you to say, ah, because the thing he mentioned there was not just love. Love, temperance, everything, goodness and all of that. But he says the fruit of the Spirit is love. You will never be matured if you don't have a love walk. There is no other fruit that can grow. You cannot be patient without love. Are you hearing me? You cannot be temperate without love. There is no goodness that can come out of you outside of love. Everything flows out of love. God is concerned about how he, a loving God, can give back to mean children, full of judgment. Said, this your son. No longer my brother. Is this your son? Did you see the way he was talking about his brother? You would have thought that that guy was adopted. Even an adopted brother, you should care about him. You should care about him. And that's the way a lot of us react to other believers. I'm not even talking about our relationship with unbelievers now. I'm not talking about your street self. You know your street self now. Your street self that will say, let's forget about church and put the Bible aside. I will give it to you. You don't know anything. No, I'm talking about your church self. Even in your church self, you are still self-conceited, selfish. It must be about you. When last did you pray for your neighbor? When last did you pray for your friends? It's about me, about me, about me. That's not the nature of God. That's not the nature of God. Bible says he was angry. The father had to beg him. 
Say, guy, come inside. The matter no reach now like that now. Come inside. He was angry. That's how the flesh reacts. Your anger is a product of not having love. Are you hearing me? Yeah, it's a product of not having love. Jesus was the one who had every reason to be angry. The people he came to save crucified him. And then he said, Father, forgive them. For they know not. That's our perfect elder brother. If you were the one that eventually made it to that cross, you would destroy the very essence of going to the cross. You say, Father, I asked you to allow this cup to pass me over. You said no. Now they have done their worst. All of them and their generation to 1,000 generations. I put them under a cross and the father is like, what's the point? <laughs> These are the people we came to save. Now you have caused them. I believe somebody like Stephen will have a special seat in heaven. If you are that one that is that anointed and they are stoning you, they are causing you pain. And even in the midst of your pain, your eyes are still open because the grace of God is upon you. And you can see Jesus, Jesus who does not stand. The Bible says he's gone into the heavens and he's seated at the right hand of the Father. In the moment that Stephen was in pain, heaven stood. If you are the one, you say, Father, pass me the lighter. You know that song now? Pass me the lighter. Let me burn these people, the spirit of Elijah. The spirit of Elijah. Let it come now. Let fire come. He said, Father, forgive. Come on now. I don't have the time to speak about forgiveness this morning. It's a proof of maturity. The things that you are struggling with, that you cannot forgive, that's your husband, that's your wife, that's your brother. It's a proof that you are still a babe. You remember the parable of those two servants. One who owed a lot of money and the master forgave him. And then as soon as he left the prison, he saw and I said, thunder fire you today. <laughs> so, come, come, thunder fire you today. How much was he owing him? The guy said, bear with me. He said, bear with you. He said, go and lock him up. That's how a lot of us are. Find it hard to forgive. We are very judgmental. We bring the judgment of God upon everybody. Say, thunder fire all of you. You don't know who you are dealing with. He's loving father with a mean child. This guy had a lot of issues, though. You know, everywhere we concentrate on the prodigal son. The prodigal son, the younger prodigal son, is better than this eldest one. This one is religious, an hypocrite by excellence. At home with the father, but never knowing the father. He had no resemblance of the father in him. Can we stand to our feet this morning? Because, you see, there is no point we doing church and saying, Father, I've always been with you and I've not, I've not, I've not done this against you. The Father is saying, you don't know me. If you know me, all that I will know is that you will have my nature. The moment you have the music, you should be jumping and saying, my brother is back. It meant that he was not a part of your intercession. You never cared that he was lost. Can you speak to God this morning and say, Lord, help my heart. Help my heart. I don't just want to be charismatic. I want to have the nature of God. I want to have the character of God. I want to be like you. A dear son indeed. A son that resembles the father. That's the kind of son that God wants us to be. Can you pray to him this morning and say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Help me, Lord, to be like you. To be like you. Imitate us of you. Imitate us of you. Following after your footsteps. Following after your footsteps. Following after your footsteps, Lord. I don't want to be an hypocrite. Oh, Jesus, spend time saying, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocritical people. We don't want to be hypocrites, Lord. Help us to live out the life of God. To live out the nature of God. Help us, oh God. Help us, oh God. Help us, oh God. Help us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we receive your grace. We grow in grace. And in the knowledge of the Father, we receive grace to be more like you. As we behold you in the mirror, we are changed. We are changed. We are changed from glory to glory. We are transformed from glory to glory. We are changed from glory to glory. The flesh profited nothing. It is the spirit that quickens. Let your spirit quicken us to become more like you. And we give you all the praise and glory this morning. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying.